Hello and welcome to a sustainable latte art workshop. My name is Emily and if you don't mind I'm going to talk really quick because we only have 10 minutes and 10 minutes is not a lot of time to go over a lot of the concepts we're going to go over. So we're just going to jump right in. I have some pre-recorded videos and we're going to talk about some of the concepts that happen during these pours. Today we're using Chobani Dairy-Free Oat Milk. This is a fantastic option for your plant-based milk. Before we look into any of these pours, I wanted to explain something about my pitcher technique. Uh, so I use a little five to six ounce cup and a really, really large pitcher. This is a 22 ounce uh, matte white round spout pitcher. And most people use something more along this size. Here, I'll show you a comparison. Um, you can see the difference. But the reason you might wanna switch and move over to a larger pitcher has to do with the concepts we're gonna touch on. So we know in latte art, that if you pour from really high up, everything is gonna sink. And if you pour really close to the surface of the coffee or whatever you're pouring into, the image is gonna stick or it's more likely to stick. If you have a smaller pitcher, the milk level is gonna come to about right here after it's steamed, which is fine. You have enough time to integrate into your espresso with the milk and then you get really close and you leave behind a beautiful design. However, if you take a larger pitcher and you steam your milk in a smaller pitcher and then move it over to the larger pitcher, you can essentially turn this pitcher sideways before the milk actually has a chance to spill out. Whereas with a smaller pitcher, if you tried to turn it sideways, the milk would spill out way sooner and it would cause a beige base. If we're able to turn it sideways, we can basically touch the espresso and then you have a ton more control. So I'm challenging you, the next time you're on bar, steam in a smaller pitcher and then take that milk and transfer it over to a bigger pitcher. Okay, with all that being said, let's move over to these pours. We're gonna talk about a couple concepts about infusing and spacing and then pacing with the layers. So. For these examples, we went ahead and used food coloring, and you can use a lot of different things. We're trying to be sustainable here and not waste espresso. Uh, so we're using oat milk and food coloring. And you just put a couple drops of the food coloring in a cup and then add some steamed oat milk and then you're good to go. You could also do this with ground coffee and cocoa powder. You can also also do this with soy sauce apparently. I saw someone do that online. Allegedly it works. You can pour into soy sauce. Okay, so let's just jump right in and let's look at these pores. Oh, I also wanna say at the very beginning before we start this, as soon as you're done steaming your milk, go ahead and keep it rotating inside the pitcher. You'll see that whenever I'm pouring, I'll keep it moving until just before the pour starts. Uh, but, okay, so here we go. We're gonna integrate and integration, we're just gonna add a little bit of milk to the base, be it uh, food coloring or espresso, whatever your base is. And we're just gonna bring it up a little bit so that we can actually turn this sideways and touch the surface. Now with food coloring, it tends to blob out away from you. It flows very quickly. So in this case, we didn't do any complex bases, didn't do any ripple bases. I just did a slight wiggle to establish a base and then after that we're going to be focusing more on the layers that come after so you'll see in the beginning we are just going to put yeah a little bit of a base it kind of warps a little bit uh, and that's okay because what we're going to do is we're going to add more layers to it and so that base is eventually going to shape out in the shape of the cup uh, so if you ever have a blobby base just add some more layers to the base okay let's go back a little bit Okay, so we layer our first layer in and you're gonna notice that at the top of the first layer is where I'm gonna start my next layer. And there's a concept here about wrapping layers and we're gonna talk about it a little bit more in depth in just a second. But if you want a layer to wrap around another layer, the idea is proximity. You want to be closer to the very first layer and that wrap will happen a lot more immediately with a lot less force. Say if you start here at the bottom of the cup where the original layer ended and you tried to wrap into it, it would wrap immediately. Whereas if you start at the very tip of the cup where we normally uh, see that top part, it's gonna take a lot more milk and a lot more effort and a lot more time to get that layer all the way to the back and then have it wrap. So closer is better when you're wrapping layers. So, okay. So right there at the top, we're just gonna wiggle in again. And then for this third one, and this is like my go-to pour when it comes to alternative milk because they tend to be slippery like this. 
So for the next one, what's going to do is it's going to shape the entire design. We've done a ripple, we did a lighter ripple, and now we're going to, to guide a solid layer deep into the base, which I think is a really cool effect. And you're going to see it's going to wrap. Uh, and where we put that solid layer from the very moment we start is right at the top of the very first layer. So watch, top of the first layer, guide it in. That was, that's it. And now you'll see it has these really cool wings to it. Look. Yeah, so for this next one, we're gonna push on the same concept of wrapping a layer, except this time we're gonna wrap a layer that's later in the pour. So we just guided a layer into the middle of our pour. At the very top of the very first pour, which is the reoccurring theme, we're gonna keep adding layers to the top of the first pour. That's where we're gonna guide another layer, but this time it's not gonna go as deep. Okay, we're gonna stop early on that one. And then at the top of that layer, see, because we're trying to wrap here, it's always going to be at the top of the layer. We're going to give it a light wiggle. And what that's going to do is it's going to create that, that third layer, sorry, fourth layer that we've added to wrap the fifth. And give it a little bit of a heavier rock when you wrap there. For the very final layer, you're going to be as gentle as you physically can. Right there at the very tip top, actually a little bit above the highest layer that way you don't wrap that first layer into it so you're going to go even higher this time to add that final heart uh, and then you just lift up and away and that is the design um so this next pour is the exact same design it's just a different color um but it's a little bit cleaner so let's take a look at it all uh, right we're sinking any blemishes that get left on the top and we're just going to put a blob layer in the beginning same story, we're gonna go in in the second. And my favorite part, we're gonna guide that layer in all the way to the back, which is gonna bring up our first two layers and shape them and wrap everything. And then again, we're gonna do a light blob, a heavy ripple, and then a light blob again. And then you cut. And that's essentially it. If you take away anything from this lesson, it's that proximity is important. So I like to say, pacing and spacing. Uh, so timing it right to meet with the foam because you don't want your foam to get stiff. And then also knowing where to be in the cup to manipulate layers. And again, the closer you are to a layer, the easier it'll wrap. The further away you are, the more work you have to do to get it to wrap. It may not wrap at all. And wrapping is a personal choice. It's an aesthetic design, but it's not that common, this style and it can be really beautiful if you execute it. Let's keep watch, let's watch this one more time, a little bit slower. Okay, we're gonna integrate, make sure our cup is tilted, and we're just gonna leave a random base layer. It's nothing special. Um, I'm doing a bit of a wiggle instead of a guided push for that first layer, only because I'm using an alternative milk here and they tend to plume away from you. So I didn't want it to rush away from me and hit the back wall. So I stayed right there in the middle and just lightly rocked and it kind of came out. When you're using regular espresso and regular milk, it won't do this. Um, it could do this actually, but it probably won't do this. There'll probably be more resistance from the coffee. However, this is for experimentation and sustainability. Okay, then we're gonna guide it deep. So do you get this concept? You push in a layer and then just above that layer is when you whip in the milk. And what that does is it causes it to wrap. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's, it's a really cool concept. And once you, once you unlock that, you're gonna be able to manipulate how you arrange your pores. Basically your pores will stop being, oh, that's a tulip, that's a rosetta. And they'll start being like, oh, that's a solid ripple, ripple solid, infused middle. Like it'll start being a lot more complicated, but simplified. So I think that'll help you a lot. Okay, and then whip it in. And then the finish is the most gentle part. And ideally you don't want that base to wrap into the top heart. It's not aesthetically super clean. Um, so like I said before, a little bit higher and then guide it in and then lift and cut and you should be good. Uh, but yeah, that looks almost drinkable except that it's food coloring. That's all I have for you. That's all the time we got. I hope that you take away some of these concepts and get to use them in your cafe. Uh, my name is Emily Bryant and you can find me on Instagram at Instagram, E-M-S-T-A-G-R-I-M. 
And uh, yeah, thank you for joining. Have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm.